Hello everyone, welcome back. In our previous session, we learned about the cache memory. From this session onwards, we will focus on different cache memory mapping techniques starting with the direct memory mapping. So gear up and let's get to learning. So as you can see in here, this is a conceptual block diagram of the secondary memory. And this is a conceptual block diagram of main memory. Now we already know programs in the computer permanently reside in the secondary storage. During execution, the same programs turn into processes, just like our friend Mr. Clark Joseph Kent here. Now every process is subdivided into equal sized pages, likewise the main memory is also split into equi sized frames. And the size of each frame is as same as the size of each page. The process of subdividing the processes into the pages and then bringing them into the main memory is the job of the operating system. And for the details of that, you can refer to our beautifully presented operating systems course. But for today, we are here to learn about how the elements are brought from the main memory into the cache memory. The organization of the cache and the main memory is almost similar to this organization. In this, the parts of the main memory are termed as blocks and the parts of the cache are named as lines. Also, the line size is as same as the block size. Now remember, these all are concepts. We won't just go on drawing the lines and the blocks on the caches and the RAMs. These illustrations are just for the sake of understanding. Now a smallest addressable memory unit is called a word. And a byte addressable memory means the size of each word is one byte. Let's assume we have a main memory with 64 word size and the size of each block is given as four words. Hence, the number of blocks in the main memory is 64 by 4, that is 16. So that blocks are numbered as 0, 1, 2, 3 up to 15. Now coming to the 64 main memory words that is starting from 0 up until 63, they are organized in the main memory somewhat like this. Because each and every memory block is supposed to have only 4 words. Now we know using one bit place, we can address two locations that is 0 to the memory location 0 and 1 to the memory cell 1. Similarly, with 2 bit places, 4 locations can be addressed. 00 for M0, 01 for M1, 10 for M2 and 11 for M3. So for 8 memory cells, we will be needing log 8 base 2, that is log 2 cube base 2, that is 3 bit places. Similarly, in order to address 0 to 63, that is 64 words, we will be needing log 64 base 2, which actually results in 6 bits. Now these 6 bits are called PA bits or physical address bits. And the reason behind that is the main memory is sometimes referred to as physical address space. And in this particular physical address space, there are 0 to 15, that is 16 blocks. And in order to locate each one of them, we will be needing log 16 base 2, that is logs 2 to the power 4 base 2, which is 4 bits. So the PA bits are split like the most significant 4 bits are used for identifying the blocks and the least significant 2 bits are used for addressing each word in each block. So the 00 will be addressing to the 0th word, 01 for the first word, 10 for the second word and similarly 11 for the third word. Now let me show you how meaningful the PA split is. Suppose the processor generates the physical address 0 followed by 5 ones. Now following our PA split, the most significant 4 bits that is 0, 1 which is nothing but 7 will be referring to the block number 7. And the least significant 2 bits, 1, 1 will refer to the last word of that particular block. Let's analyze the generated physical address. If we consider all the bit places magnitudes and add up all the values which has 1's underneath of them, we get the value as 31. And that is the exact value of the word which was being pointed out by the physical address. Isn't it beautiful? Now let's assume we have a cache of 16 words and the block size was already given to us as 4 words. Now we already know both the block and the line are equal in sizes. In that case, line size is also going to be 4 words. Therefore, number of lines in the cache is 16 by 4, that is 4, which is 0, 1, 2 and 3. And in order to identify 4 different lines, we will be needing log 4 base 2, that is log 2 square base 2, which is 2 bits. 
Well, it's pretty obvious that all the main memory blocks can't really be assigned to all the cache lines at once. Therefore, we have to perform something called mapping. Now, the mapping takes place in round robin manner. So, these are the blocks of the main memory and these are the cache lines. The zeroth block will be mapped onto the zeroth line. The first block will be mapped onto the first line. The second block is going to be mapped onto the second line. And the third block will be mapped onto the third line. At this point, we might think that for the fourth block and the rest, there are no available cache lines. But there, the round robin manner comes at rescue. So, the fourth block will be mapped onto the zeroth line and the fifth one is going to be mapped onto the first line. And this keeps on following. Now, this is the complete mapping. If we observe closely, the least significant two bits of the block number is actually dictating which cache line to map onto. Like the block number 0, 4, 8, 12, they are going to get mapped onto the line number 0. The block numbers 1, 5, 9 and 13 mapped onto the line number 1. For blocks 2, 6, 10 and 14, they are going to get mapped onto the line number 2 and finally, Block number 3, 7, 11 and 15, these are going to get mapped onto the line number 3. So, this is a many to one relation. So, finally, the PA bits are split like this. The least significant two bits are called block or line offset. They determine each word inside either block or line. Now, the rest are called block numbers. Now, from the block numbers, the last two bits are known as line number because they actually dictate which cache line that particular block will be mapping onto. So, the remaining bits are known as tag bits. Now, let's try and understand why these are called tag bits. Now, let's select block number 3 and analyze its contents. 12, 13, 14, 15 and these are their 6-bit binary equivalents. Also, we witness that like block number 3, block number 7, 11 and 15 are also mapped onto the same cache line that is line number 3. So, let's observe their contents as well. Block number 7's got 28, 29, 30 and 31. 11 has 44, 45, 46 and 47. And for 15, there is 60, 61, 62 and 63. Now, observe this. For block number 3, the tag bits are 0, 0. For block number 7, the tag bits are 0, 1. For 11, the tag bits are 1, 0. And 15, it's 1, 1. So, do you understand the pattern? So, actually, these bits will identify which one of the blocks is present in the cache. Basically, they work as the tags and thus the naming. So, to conclude, this memory mapping technique is called direct mapping as the main memory blocks are mapped directly onto the cache lines. And the mapping procedure is strict. So, that was all for this session. I hope now you have a lucid understanding about the entire concept of direct memory mapping technique. From the next session onwards, we will solve interesting numerical problems related to this concept. Hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.